This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. And welcome back to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, coming to you from our studios in beautiful, sunny, and warm Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on this 31st day of the month. My guest this hour is Dr. James Kroll. He is an electrical engineer by profession. He earned his Ph.D. degree from SUNY, and that's a sunny brook back in 1997, and has gone on to work on the development, design, and management of various telecommunication projects with a number of highly visible telecom equipment providers. Dr. Kroll has also had a lifelong interest in dreaming, stemming from a number of unusual dreams Um, experiences and intense nightmares that he had as a child. He had his first off-the-cuff lucid dream back in 1998. He found it to be a fascinating experience and read upon the subject in an attempt to induce these experiences more, uh, you know, readily, reliably. Now, early attempts met only with modest success. However, in 2006, Dr. Kroll rekindled his interest in lucid dreaming. By now, technology had improved and numerous websites had popped up dedicated to the art of lucid dreaming. With all this additional information and options, he found it fairly easy to learn to lucid dream on demand. He has now experienced over 800 lucid dreams, and that's just in the last four years. Joining me now is Dr. James Kroll. Uh, James, welcome to the X-Zone. Thank you very much, and, and thank you for having me. It's my great pleasure. James, can you describe for our listeners what a lucid dream is? Sure. Um, you know, we all have typical non-lucid dreams every night, whether or not we remember them or not. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it, Unless you've got some kind of biochemical irregularity, you're, you're dreaming in roughly 90-minute 90, uh, 90 cycles. Um, the early cycles, you're only dreaming, you're in REM or stage 5 sleep for a short period of, of time. As those cycles progress, you spend more and more time in REM. Um, there are a lot of people who believe that you need to wake up out of REM in order to recall your dreams, which does explain why some people have a better recall than others. Mm-hmm. And in, in this state, of course, um, and this will be meaningful to all of your uh, listeners, you know, we, we find ourselves where we think the situation is real. We find ourselves in pleasurable situations, frightening situations, and it all seems very real at the time. But, of course, we wake up and we say, oh, I was just dreaming. Um, but, but, again, it, it, it's very real. It's very tangible at the time. Um, the difference between a non-lucid dream and a lucid dream is fundamentally in a lucid dream, you identify something that's unusual, your logical processing re-manifests itself in some way, and you actually realize that you're embedded in a dream. Um, and, if, if you know, I, I like to talk in, in analogies sometimes. It's kind of like the holodeck on the Starship Enterprise. Um, you're embedded in a, in a world that's a projection of, of, of your mind as, as opposed to a projection of, of light and, and holograms. Um, in, in this state, things feel quite real um, and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, it, it, so, so um, I mean, that sort of describes the, the concept, if you will. All right, James, you and I have to take a two-minute commercial break. When we come back, more of Dr. James Kroll. We're going to be talking about lucid dreaming and much more this hour on the Exxon. If you'd like to give us a call, toll-free worldwide, 1-800-610-7035. My email address is exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On on MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. And if you'd like to get your copy of the March uh, 2010 edition of the X Chronicles newspaper, send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com, and we'll be glad to send you our link on Scribd. You'll be able to read the entire 44 pages online and see exactly what has got me so ticked off about the UFO community. 
I'll be back on the other side of this two-minute break as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada on the Talk Star Radio Network and Exxon Broadcast Network. Don't go away. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st Century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at www.drgibbswilliams.com. Shamanism is recognized as a method to access the quantum level. Mastery of shamanic skills puts spiritual information and healing power into your hands. Path Home Shamanic Art School, a bonded Colorado certified occupational school, has met rigorous state standards ensuring its director and instructors have the qualifications to teach the shamanic arts. Path Home offers its certification program in blocks of study. Block 1, a five-day intensive, will be held in the beautiful mountain town of Coldale, Colorado, October 13th through 18th. Registration deadline is September 12th. Experience journey trance, power animals, helping spirits, sacred space, and life purpose. Come discover your power. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, in the magical world of shamanism. Call 303-775-3431 or visit findyourpathhome.com. With each new extreme weather event or terrorist act, it becomes increasingly obvious that we live in uncertain and challenging times. We all buy car insurance. Why not collapse and catastrophe insurance? Matthew Stein, an MIT-trained engineer and green builder, has written two outstanding books to help people prepare, plan for, and deal with everything from minor situations lasting a few days to full-on collapse. Matt's first book, When Technology Fails, is a manual for self-reliance, sustainable living, and surviving the long emergency. This massive book covers the gamut from first aid and emergency preparedness to alternative healing, renewable energy, primitive living skills, and 18th century technologies that could be critical to your comfort and survival in a long-lasting crisis. Matt's second book, When Disaster Strikes, is a comprehensive emergency preparedness handbook and survival guide. When Disaster Strikes is an essential item for every family's go-bag. Both books are available at all usual sources. There's a wealth of totally free information posted at whentechfails.com and author signed copies may be purchased at mattstein.com. That's www.wentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com. And welcome back, Exo Nation. Dr. James Kroll is our special guest this hour. His website is www.mortalmist.com. That's www.mortalmist. Dot com. James, when we're uh, lucid dreaming, how does the 
logical side of our consciousness adapt to this world of fantasy? Mm-hmm. Excellent question. Let me actually spin it around back to the non-lucid dream state. In a non-lucid dream state, I would argue, and a lot of people would argue, that essentially your logic and reasoning is turned off, mm-hmm. which is to say you might be on a street, a 10-foot chicken walks by, you say, oh, boy, that's a big chicken, but you don't <laughs> identify it as impossible, right? Right. Um, there's, there's plenty of evidence that the, the fact that your logic and reasoning is turned off has to do with the fact that your left cortex is not functioning at a high level, which is typically responsible for mathematical analysis, logic, processing, things of that nature. When, when you look at um, neurotransmitters that affect left cortex, you're looking at acetylcholine, you're looking at dopamine, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, th- these neurotransmitters seem to be on a relatively lower supply in, during non-lucid dreams. And there seems to be a correlation between high levels of these neurotransmitters and an ability to become lucid or, or even have high cognitive recovery during a lucid dream. Which is to say, sometimes you might identify the fact that you're dreaming, but your cognitive recovery has not been fully manifested again. You, you might not recall the goals that you had, things of that nature. It, you might get, you, you're still somewhat caught into this fantasy as opposed to a state where you've really fully recovered your cognitive uh, ability, you remember some goals that you might have, you're interacting with this dream world, not as a fantasy, mm-hmm. but as, as an objectionable or uh, an objective state that you're trying to extract information from. Why do people dream? Oh, boy, there's, there's about 9,000 theories on that one. I, I, I do not consider myself a, a, an expert on, on the concept of why people dream. Uh, um, certainly, it seems that mm-hmm. it's required for, for normal psychological balance. Right. I, I think that's very well um, understood. Um, what dreams are, or anybody's guess. Um, it, you know, if you look at Eastern culture, they, they believe it's, it's generated or, or sort of dictated by, by karmic threads that you pick up during the day, and they sort of manifest... Um, at, at, at night as, as sort of dream fantasies. It, it, it's anybody's guess. I, I don't consider myself an expert there. All right. How would one, or let me let me direct the question directly to you. How do you induce a lucid dream? Sure. You know, there's, a, and, and as you said in the, in the introduction, there really is a heck of a lot of information out there and technology out there that's quite interesting. Um, you know, when you talk about um, researchers who have really made a mark, you're talking about Stephen LeBurge, mm-hmm. you're talking about Tom Ushak, Scott Stride, a number of people who have really made a lot of progress with regard to understanding the dreaming mind and the, and the biochemistry thereof. Um, it, it, you know, the long and short of it really is that it, it really boils down to biochemistry in the brain. Um, and, and like we talked about, um, a logical processing team seems to be turned off in, in the brain. Well, how do you induce better logical processing when you're dreaming? Um, the, the most common method, uh, or, or the, 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 the pharmaceutical method, if you will, is, is to bias acetylcholine. And, you know, typically you could do that naturally by doing what's called wake, to be- wake back to bed. Um, that's nothing more than sleeping five or six hours, getting most of your delta wave, non-REM sleep both with and staying up for about an hour. You'll actually um, develop a, a balance of neurotransmitters in the brain more consistent with being awake. If, if you do manage to fall back asleep, the balance in your brain is closer to a wakeful state than it is a sleeping state, and, and the neurotransmitter balance is favorable to inducing a lucid dream, if that makes sense. Um, there's other technologies like dream masks that are essentially masks that you wear at night, that have motion detectors on your eyes. It tries to detect if your eyes are moving consistent with REM. It flashes lights. Um, it, the, the, the concept is that you're supposed to, uh, it, is that the light and or sound might penetrate the dream. It's going to manifest in the dream in some sense, and you need to train yourself to see that in a dream. Um, the problem with those devices, frankly, is some people can't sleep with them. They're too bulbous or too cumbersome. Um, sometimes the lights and sound wake the dreamer up, which is, of course, counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of uh, discussion about brainwave entrainment methods. Um, personally, we, we talk about this a little bit later, um, th- there are a number of brainwave entrainment methods. I've discovered a method that I hold a, you know, a U.S. patent application on that involves the use of electro, uh, cranial, cranial electrostimulation to induce a brain state favorable to lucid dreaming. So, you know, in, in, in the direct question, circling back to, to the original one, is 
most often I'm using um, basically supplements that bias acetylcholine, like choline, galantamine, huperzine A, nicotine, things of that nature, and or I'm combining that with uh, cranial electrostimulation, which is uh, uh, sort of my homegrown method, if you will, of, of inducing lucids. So can we say then, uh, James, that lucid dreaming is controlled dreaming? Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, and, and again, it goes back to the whole issue of cognitive recovery. Um, you know, in, in a non-lucid dream, you're in no control. Mm-hmm. In, in, in a low-level lucid dream, you're in some control. You realize it's a dream, but you still might be a victim of the things that are going on in the dream, so to speak. In, in a high-level lucid dream, you are in control. And, you know, you're projecting, and I think we'll get to this momentarily, you're projecting physical realities into that dream space, but all of those realities can be tweaked or twisted or broken if if your level of consciousness is, is, is high. Does, does lucid dreaming, I mean induced lucid dreaming, have any danger to the person who is, who is taking this dream psychologically or physically? Um, a- outstanding question. Let me address the second one first. Um, physically, I- I've done the most daring, insane, dangerous things in lucid dreams at times, and I have never been hurt. So, you know, we're all familiar with the fact, uh, with, with a non-lucid dream where you're falling, you hit the ground, mm-hmm. you wake up before dying. Of course, you can't really, it, it, it's difficult for us to perceive what dying even feels like, what it, what it even means, right? Uh, I'm so, so to the, the answer to your second question, no, there's no physical danger whatsoever. Um, psychologically, I, I suppose you could come up with arguments that you might somehow lose touch with what reality is. Um, I, I mean, hopefully we're all mature enough and, and all sufficiently astute explorers to, to identify the state special. It's got special rules, special laws, if you will, and, and they don't apply to what I would call our real world. Because if Mother Nature intended us to zap ourselves into a lucid dream state at will, wouldn't she have built us into the system that we have? <laughs> well, you know, there's one argument, and, and you raise an interesting point. There's one argument that says, as a process of evolution, we've lost our ability to become lucid on dreams. And, and so what do I mean by that? What, what I really mean is, as a survival mechanism, mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense, you could, you could argue, for people to be lucid in a dream state because if you were used to the laws and realities in a dream state, they wouldn't necessarily help you in real life, if you see my point. Which is to say, if, uh, if you're used to jumping off buildings and flying and, and walking through walls in, in, in your dream space, well, these are not uh, attributes or experiences that you want to put into your real world, really. So why would somebody want to invoke lucid dreaming? Sure. Um, you know, the, the, the practical applications are, are I- I extremely wide, and it's a very individual experience. Um, it's to me to judge what people should do. It's not for you to judge. It's a very individual experience. Um, it, certainly, there's plenty of evidence that you can practice physical tasks in a lucid dream. Uh, Dr. LeBurge, in his classic book, Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming, talks about playing tennis in lucid dreams and actually the practice in a tennis game um, improving the, the, the real performance. Uh, but there, there's another example that I want to throw on the table here because it would be, I think, of interest to you and your readers. Um, it, it, it's relatively easy to eliminate recurrent nightmares in a lucid dream. And, and, and let me give you a, a fantastic example that I think your, your listeners will kind of uh, lead to, if you will. Ever since I was a child, I had dreams about meeting up with aliens. Mm-hmm. And, you know, now this is not my my suggestion that I abducted anything like that. More, more likely, I saw some kind of TV show, some kind of movie that scared the crap out of me, right? It, it, it generated what's called a negative karmic thread, and that negative karmic thread runs in your brain during the course of your life. Now, if you have to see a show about aliens, you have a discussion about aliens, that negative karmic thread comes to sort of bubble up, and when you dream at night, you might have a, a dream, a lucid dream about aliens. Mm-hmm. And I, I, for, for many, many decades, in fact, I had such dreams. Um, the, the, if you go back to Tibetan dream yoga, um, what they talk about is basically becoming lucid and eliminating negative karmic threads. So what I mean specifically is once a negative karmic thread generates, uh, um, if you will, a, a dream about confronting an alien, it, it's extinguished. It's gone. It's done. But the question is, how do you deal with the confrontation with an alien in your dream? If you deal with it negatively, which is to say you become frightened, you become scared, you re-manifest negative karmic threat again, which sits in your brain. 
if you basically um, address the the uh, confrontation with the alien in this example with sort of uh, compassion, understanding, and, and, and understanding of it's it's a projection of your mind. It can't hurt you. The negative karma thread is effectively um, extinguished, and it will never crop up again. So I, I was able to actually do this a couple of years ago. The, the recurrent dream is about alien stops. And uh, it, it, it's an outstanding example of how you can lose, you know, use lucid dreaming to uh, nullify a recurrent sort of nightmare. Um, there, there's all kinds of discussions about dr- addressing phobias and lucid dreams and, and things of that nature. Is it possible that lucid dreaming is responsible for the majority of people who claim to have been abducted by aliens? <laughs> you know, I've, I've heard all sorts of theories. And, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's interesting. It, it, it's interesting. Um, I, I, I wouldn't blame it on lucid dreaming because, in principle, in a lucid dream state, your logic is 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 high, and your understanding of the situation is high. Um, it, it, it's hard to say. All right, Doctor, stand by. You and I have to take a commercial break with the news at the bottom of the hour. Exxon Nation. Our special guest this hour is Doctor James Kroll. His website is www.mortalmist. Dot com. That's www.mortalmist.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this news break as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network and the Exxon Broadcast Network. Don't go away. It was a terrifying experience. I thought we was going to go to jail for murder. That day, you know, we were a little behind, so we worked until it was starting to get dark. We loaded up the equipment and we hadn't driven very far when we caught glimmers of this glow coming through the trees. I urged Mike to hurry up and get up there. Travis had the door open before we even stopped. As he got closer, I heard the sound One of the guy said, you feel that? I really panicked then. I told him, get the hell out of here. It didn't come directly to me, it came to a, a deputy sheriff. Three of us volunteered right away to tell him what had happened. Sheriff Gillespie definitely didn't believe it. He says that we better be certain, because we can get in a lot of trouble. When we went to search the next day, they split us up, and the whole time, the deputies asked me, you know, if you just tell us where the body is, we can all go home and get this over with. We're talking about 100 people combing through the wooded area. Nothing turns up. All week long, I've been hearing they're going to set it up to make you guys look guilty. We're a rough-looking bunch, then. Some of us have been in trouble with the law before. And y'all ain't never going to come out of that jailhouse. We couldn't get out. I tried to sneak out the back door the day of the polygraph test. I was scared to death. On top of that, you have media. I literally would be on two telephones at the same time. We've even got some coops in here now that's coming in and out to see the freak show, as they call it. Everyone descends. I just wasn't going to stand there and listen to it anymore. Granny says, this is Travis. I'm back. I need help. When I did hear that he had been returned, it was almost as unbelievable as the original thing. I just looked at my mom and says, I told you we didn't kill him. Travis Walton reappeared after several days with a bizarre story about a ride in an unidentified flying object. People were desperate to explain it away. Why are you sticking up for Travis for all this time? You know this really didn't happen. What happened to Travis after we took off in that truck, I can't tell you. I hated Travis for a long time after this. My whole world just tore up. But I believe every word Travis said about it. He's never lied to me about nothing. It's a net negative. We lost our jobs in the immediate aftermath. And now you're not able to talk about it with anyone because you know that they're going to laugh at you, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. But if you don't come out and tell your story, somebody else is going to tell it for you. There's a degree of responsibility. Uh, Certainly, I have to accept the bad. If I can direct what's happened in a way that I can make something good happen in the world, I'm looking for it. Order your copy of Travis, the true story of Travis Walton, today at www.travaswaltonthemovie.com. 
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exome Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exome Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming 24-7-365. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. And welcome back. Uh, Dr. James Kroll is our special guest. His website is www.mortalmist.com. Dr. Kroll is a subject matter expert on the use of supplements to modify neurotransmitter levels in the brain to induce brain states that are conductive to lucid dreaming. He holds a recent patent application on the use of cranial electrostimulation as stimulation to induce lucid dreaming. Dr. Kroll also has a lifetime interest in PSI phenomenon. He is now coupling his interest in lucid dreaming and PSI phenomenon to investigate the use of this unusual altered state of consciousness to design experiments that will hopefully shed some light on the connection between the dreaming mind and PSI. And once again, welcome back, Dr. Kroll. Great having you with us. Thank you very much. Um, What is meant by the term PSI phenomenon? 
Oh, uh, fantastic question, although I, I'm, I'm sure your listeners are quite astute in, in that regard. You know, we're, we're talking about precognition, which is the ability to get a sense of something before it happens, mm-hmm. of course. We're talking about telepathy, which is connection between two Mayans. Uh, you know, your, your, your father in Arizona uh, has an emergency, and you get a sense of it, that type of thing. We're talking about clairvoyance, um, sometimes called remote viewing, or, or, of course, telekinesis, which is the ability of the mind to alter a physical substance in, in, in this reality. Can you give me some scientific examples that proves, Doctor, the existence of PSI in some reasonable sense? Sure. You know, and, and, and this is a fantastic question. Um, you know, it, uh, probably the premier uh, researcher in this regard is Dr. Radin, uh, who is with the, the uh, Institute of Noetic Guidance Sciences in, in California, if I recall. Um, he has a very interesting skin conductance test that, you know, if, if you really look at that data, I, I think, you know, proves to a very high degree that, that precognitive abilities exist. And it's a very simple experiment, actually. He's got sensors on the hands, he's, he's measuring skin conductance, and he has... Um, a test subject looking at a, a computer monitor. And randomly, he's flashing um, a different images on the computer screen. Some are very innocuous images, like a, 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 a garden, uh, an outdoor scene, mm-hmm. innocuous images. So, some are more intensely emotional images, uh, violent images, sexual images, things of that nature. Now, no great surprise, um, skin conductance changes um, it, with regard to the intensity of the image. What, what was profound in, in that experiment is that the skin conductance changes before the image is shown. And it changes consistently about two seconds beforehand, which is a very clear example of precognition where, where the mind is anticipating something. There's a physical reaction to it. Um, now, non-believers are always going to come up with some kind of other uh, explanation of this, but, but in terms of examples I know that are really profound, really you know, scientific, if you will, that, that's kind of my favorite example. Why does it seem like the dreaming mind can often pick up on PSI information, sir? You know, I, I, I've read all kinds of theories. Um, you know, certainly, it, I, I mean, for, let, let's start with, with human experience. Okay. Um, I, I have certainly had precognitive dreams. I, I don't believe I'm special. I, I think a lot of people have had these. Um, the, the question becomes, why, why is the dreaming mind special? Uh, and there's all kinds of models about what consciousness is, okay? I mean, and, and let's really boil it down to that very question. Um, there's a lot of speculation that consciousness does not reside in the brain. There's, a question, there's sort of speculation or hypothesis that the brain is a filter toward consciousness and that the brain filters our awareness in a sense consistent with evolution where we're engaged in the moment, um, we're, we're only viewing and, and concerned with what's around us. And, and, and from a pure evolutionary perspective, that makes sense. But, but if you look at this brain as a filter model and, and you, you speculate or, or you extend it to people who are savants, people who have had head injuries, things of that nature, um, there's plenty of documentation of savants who are um, inclined towards psi phenomena. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of uh, evidence and, and literature about people who have had head injuries and inclined to psi phenomena, things of that nature. It, it, it behooves us to ask the question, you know, has the brain, you know, been injured or is at, at risk of being, uh, say, saying the, same, the, the incorrect word, um, not operating correctly, such that these people can tune into something that the average person can't. But when we talk about psi phenomena, we're really, you know, the people who seem to be able to tune into it are usually able to quiet their mind, usually able to concentrate. They're usually able to get a, a sense, if you will, of, of something and not distracted by the noise that's around us, if that makes sense. Has anyone explored lucid dreaming to investigate psi besides yourself? <clears throat> you know, to the very best of my knowledge, no. And I, I, I will tell you why it doesn't make sense. Um, lucid dreaming is a relatively hard state to achieve, mm-hmm. at, at least historically it's been. Uh, psi phenomenon has been a relatively challenging research field to explore. So, so what have you combined it to? <laughs> you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot, if you will. Um, at, to the first point, lucid dreaming has become very achievable. Okay? If, if you are intent on learning lucid dreaming and you're open-minded and you are... 
um, practical about trying one technique at a time, and practical about trying some supplements to to uh, bias neurotransmitter levels, things of that nature, mm-hmm. and you give yourself some time, you can learn lucid dreaming. My, my concern at this point is a lot of the experts in psi phenomenon probably don't know how easy it's become with, with the advances in technology. So, you know, again, what's interesting to me, coming full circle a little bit, if, if you believe that the dreaming mind is attuned to psi phenomenon because certain filters are disabled, if you will, then, you know, even in a lucid dream, you're still talking about filters that are disabled, even though you're consciously controlling the dream to some extent, some of what's happening in that dream is not under your control. Conversations with dream characters are not under, they're on, under your control. They're going to answer questions or you, you can have experiences that are driven by, you know, the, the karmic thread driving the dream. And, and it's an interesting coupling of a state conducive to lucid dreaming to investigate psi, which, which I think is just fascinating. Now, I understand that you're working on an experiment, uh, uh, a dream PSI experiment, and I was wondering if you could share okay. it with our listeners. Sure. So let me let me give you the high level okay. here, and and I I open the state that I'm I'm trying to convince no one but myself. I I walked into this saying, hey, this is an interesting problem. I've got some interesting uh, attributes to my lucid dreaming. Let me let me try to construct something. Uh, I'll go to that second point first. In 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 my lucid dreaming experiences, I seem to have a, a, a gift, if you will to start a lucid dream where I began in real life. So what do I mean by that? Typically, I'll go downstairs at about 3, 4, 4 o'clock in the morning. I'll try to induce a lucid dream. I'll go on the couch. I'm, I'm not disturbing my wife or, or anybody else. And typically, when I find myself lucid dreaming, I find myself on the couch in my TV room. But, of course, it's, it's a projection of my mind. It's a dream that started where I left off in real life. And now, the interesting thing about that transition is if I could start where start off in a lucid dream where I left in real life, well, that opens up the possibility to leaving out different objects or, or things of that nature in the real world that I might retrieve in my dream space, if that makes sense. So basically, I came up with the notion of using the concept of xenoids, which are, are very well known in psi phenomenon. Sure. It, it, it's different symbols. And I, 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 I've gone through different iterations of, of this experiment. I've done it about 50 times. I'm sort of tuning my, my ability and to, to, to influence the, the, the dream and uh, the, the, the experiment and optimize it, if you will. But uh, essentially, I, I drilled down to um, a, a, a specific experiment where I'm looking at three Zener cards. So I've got a star, a uh, cross, and three parallel squiggly lines. So I take those cards, I randomize them, I put them face down on the kitchen counter before going back to sleep. I, I have no idea. They all, from, from the back of the card, they all look identical. There's nothing that would give away which card is which. I go to my couch and try to induce a lucid dream, or specifically try to induce a lucid dream where I find myself dreaming um, where I left off in, in reality. Um, if I can, in fact, induce that state, I'll walk over to the cards, I'll randomly pick a card, and I'll try to blank out my perception of which card it is. Now, now, that's an important point, because if I pick up a card and I think it's going to be a star, well, it's pretty well known in lucid dreaming that you can influence the, the, the visuals of what you're seeing in a dream. So if you think it's going to be a star, it's probably going to be a star. Um, if you can blank out your mind, flip the card and what it is, well, you've got a chance to basically extract Psi information, if you will. Now, now, interestingly, this is not precognition because you've already laid out the cards. The, the physical process of laying out those cards has happened. But I'm trying to use my dream space to perceive what those cards would be. Um, sometimes, if I'm flipping a card, I would see a very distinguished shape, like a star or a cross or whatever. And, and sometimes, it's something that's morphed in some sense. Um, I, I sort of record that information mentally. I, I go over about my business. When I wake up, I say to myself, what well, that was an interesting shape or an interesting image. Which, which image does it seem to be? Squiggly lines, cross, or star? And, you know, effectively, I'll make a decision. I'll walk over to the card in question, and I'll flip it. And I've either got a hit or a miss. It's very simple. Um, you know, the most recent incarnation of, of this particular experiment, in the last 27 tries, I've had 18 hits. Now, you would wow. expect about nine hits, randomly speaking, yes. based on the experiment. Um, and 18 hits sounds interesting, but, you know, it, it sounds like, oh, maybe he got lucky. You, you know, when you actually model this as Bernoulli trials, which is precisely what it is, and you'll, you'll come up with the number of combinations of 18 things in 27 at a time, it's 400,000 and change, 
any particular sequence has a probability of about 1 in, in 10 times, 10 to the minus 11th, blah, blah, blah. But, but the upshot is the probability of getting 18 hits out of 27 tries is about 3 in 10,000. Right. The probability of getting um, 18 or more hits out of 27 is about 4 in 10,000. Now, now, this kind of drives us to the classic situation where, okay, is he making stuff up? Did he get lucky, or is there something interesting going on? And, and it, it's it's the problem that all side researchers, you know, fundamentally are going to confront. Um, and and it's a matter of interpretation. Um, as I've said to some of my colleagues, I'm, I'm more moralist. Boy, I can guarantee you, I'm not making something up. I mean, what would be the, the motive? Um, secondarily, there don't seem to be any scientific flaws. And and third, the notion of having you know a, a, a sequence of events that has a probability of uh, four in ten thousand is is interesting. Uh, I, I'm not saying I've proven anything, but I'm saying it's interesting, and it, it, it's it's a very unique model where maybe we could leverage information from the dream space to identify things that have, are are happening in what we identify as our real world. If if, if you're following that that long-winded story, what do your colleagues? say about the experimentation that you're doing with lucid dreaming? You know, it's, uh, it, it, it's very interesting. Um, you know, it, you, know you, you go back to Raiden work, or you go back to the work of Diane Hennessy Powell, who mm -hmm. uh, wrote a recent book, ESP Enigma, that, that really focused a lot on, on the dreaming mind and, and ESP. Um, you know, it, it, you've got people in both camps. You're always going to have the very scientific type who demand scientific proof and 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 going full circle? Boy, I haven't been videotaping myself. It it, it wasn't part of the motivation. The, the motivation here is to prove to myself that it's possible. To speculate from sort of a quantum physics perspective, if you will, or a theoretical uh, a physics perspective, if you will, what model justifies this happening in the first place? And and maybe tweaking experiments and iterating between experiments and theory, to sort of hone in on something that might be interesting. It, 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 you're always going to have people who insist on, on, on strong mathematical or scientific proof. You're going to always going to have people who are, are uh, you know, believers in, mm -hmm. in the paranormal and things of that nature. Um, you, you know, and, and the interesting point I, I would throw on the table is, you know, when we talk about some of these mysteries, when we talk about psi phenomena, what was interesting to me is, well, well my hypothesis is, it's not all about um, psi phenomenon, religion, shamanism. It's not all about quantum physics and, and, and Newtonian physics. The, the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. And, and I think there are very special altered states of consciousness that give us insight into these phenomena. And, and, and that's really what I'm trying to hone in on, if you will. You know, speaking about quantum physics, when I come back from this commercial break that we have to take, uh, Doctor, this is our final break for this hour. Here's the question I'd like to leave you with, and uh, maybe you can answer us when we come back. What's the connection between PSI and quantum physics? I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with Dr. James Kroll as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to get more information on uh, Dr. Kroll, his website is www.mortalmist.com. That's M-O-R-T-A-L-M-I-S-T. Dot com. That's www.mortalmist.com. And don't forget, if you'd like to get a copy of the March 2010 edition of the X Chronicles newspaper, in which I do a rant on my concern for the reality, uh, the reality way of thinking of the UFO community, send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. I'll send you a link where you can read it on Scribd, along with 31 other editions of the X Chronicles. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. Dr. Noel and I return on the other side of this break as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada on the Talkstar Radio Network and the Exxon Broadcast Network. Don't go Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. 
Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming 24-7, 365. Coming soon to the Exxon Broadcast Network is a different perspective with me, Kevin Randall, as your host. We'll be taking a close look at what is happening in the world of UFOs today with side trips into the paranormal. Guests will range from those who are household names to those who have a different perspective on a variety of topics. No topic will be taboo, but there will be tough questions asked as we all search for the truth about UFOs, the paranormal, and those things that excite us. Sometimes we'll agree with a guest and sometimes we won't, but we'll try to keep the program topical. For those of you who would like to read, be sure to visit www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com and remember to listen to the other fine programs on the X-Zone Broadcast Network at www.xzbn.net. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st Century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. What Happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genix provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life has no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. 
Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying, is available on Amazon and at stores worldwide wherever books are sold. James Kroll is our special guest. His website is www.mortalmist.com. And James, what is the connection between psi and quantum physics? <laughs> uh, again, it's a speculative one. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of theories as to what accounts for psi phenomenon. I, I think the evidence for psi is overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And if you really look at the statistical basis and, and, and experiments and so forth, um, there's a lot of speculation. Certainly the, the one that, that jives with me the best is, in, is the notion of a multiverse. It, it, it's pretty clear when you dig into quantum physics that there is this connection between consciousness and matter. Um, there are those who speculate that human consciousness basically forks off different universes. I, I know that's uh, like a rather profound yes. concept. It's not my own. Uh, many uh, excellent quantum physicists believe the same thing. Um, in, interestingly, if, if you believe the notion that consciousness works off multiverses or, or copies of the universe that you're a part of and, and you sort of stick with one of them, if you will, it, it, it's interesting because the way I've actually modeled this dream sci experiment is to say, well, what if you left out those cards at a particular point in time, some sequence of events forked off a different universe? Mm-hmm. What if the dreaming mind is a projection into that universe? Um, you'd be extracting information from that space with that turning over the cards in your real world. Um, it, it's sort of beyond the scope of what we could talk about on the radio. You know, there's a number of, of sketches and, and conjectures I have on, on the website that kind of speak to that hypothesis. What about uh, mortalmist.com? What can our listeners find out about that? You know, Mortal Mist was um, started up about two years ago. There's plenty of other lucid dreaming sites on the Internet, sites that boast 10, 20,000 members. Mortal Mist is a very small, very intimate site. Um, right now we have about 400 members or so. It's been up and running for about two years. I would call it more of a mature, it's very comprehensive, um, you know, very uh, easy to sort of uh, acclimate yourself and, and get some help from some more experienced lucid dreamers. Um, you know, the thing I would offer to your listeners is that I'm sort of re- um, heading up what we call the Research Guild, where we're proposing a number of scientific experiments that leverage lucid dreaming um, for, for, you know, the, the, the purpose of science. Um, so I've got a call for participation uh, for people to try the cranial electrostimulation technology for lucid dream induction. I need a lot more data and a lot more human experience in that regard to understand how effective it is. Um, we've got some ongoing experiments with regard to psi phenomena. Um, I've got some conjectures of my own, and uh, again, these are not my own conjectures, but you know, there are certainly people who believe that you know, dreamers or astral voyagers are connected to ghosts in yeah. some sense. I, uh, again, I don't, think it's, <laughs> I don't think it's radically far-fetched, but the, the question becomes, if in fact ghosts are astral voyagers or lucid dreamers, how do you detect them? And, you know, again, if you can basically induce a lucid dream where you start in real work, in, in real life, if you will, well, then the notion of detecting an electromagnetic field, the notion of detecting negative or positive ions in relation to the astral projector or the lucid dreamer interacting with the real world, it becomes implementable. And it's a provocative question and, and, and one that we're sort of just starting to dig into. Dr. Kroll, I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been a great pleasure talking to you and uh, getting a better insight into what lucid dreaming is. I wish you much success, and if there's anything we can do to help you with your experimentation or if you need to get a message out there, please let us know. We'll be glad to have you back on at any time. Oh, uh, my, my pleasure, Robin. Thank you very much for having me. Good night, Doctor. Dr. James Kroll, ExoNation, www.mortalmist.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as the Exxon continues live and around the world from our studios in beautiful, sunny, and warm Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Mm-hmm. 